Leela. Hey! Hello! Hello! Hello, everybody. Welcome to the very much delayed live show for the Ostentatious Book Club. We are going to talk about The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, which is the prequel to The Lord of the Rings. If you didn't know, I mean, you probably do. It's like very general knowledge, but whatever. Um, Natasha is not with us today, sadly, but the rest of us are here. So, yay, we're not all sick again. So, yeah. <laughs> let's go around and introduce ourselves. I am Zoe, you're here on my channel, so you know what my channel name is. Hello. <laughs> Next, Hannah. Um, I'm Hannah, my channel is a clockwork reader. Maureen? Maureen? <laughs> oh, it's me. I, I'm Maureen from Maureen TV. And I'm Joss, my channel is Squibbles Reads. I'm pretty sure I put all of their links down below, so you can click on that now. If not, I'm going to update that, update that right after this, so you can go and subscribe to them. They're all amazing, but let's get into what we're here, what we're congregated here to talk about today, The Hobbit. First impressions, what did you all think about it? Hannah, you want to start um. us off? Sure. So I read this one last year for the first time, and um, I absolutely love like Lord of the Rings, the movies, and I love uh, the Hobbit movies, and I read all of them like after I watched the films. So I was expecting to already like the story in general because I love the story, but um, the book was honestly kind of disappointing for me personally. Like I still liked it, it just wasn't. At, because the movies are like three movies and there's way more depth to it. There wasn't as much depth to this one since it's just like a children's story and it's a lot shorter. So for me, it was a bit disappointing, unfortunately. Boring. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm like the last in my what I can see, so I don't know what order we go going in. Oh, yeah, you're um, next. Okay. Um, I actually really like it. Different from Joss. I like this one because it's less in or I said Joss. I meant Hannah. I'm tired. I was like, Maureen? <laughs> it's okay. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so I like this because it's not as intimidating as Lord of the Rings. And I don't think I liked it as much as the first time I read it. But I am pretty sure it's because this is really meant to be a narrative story that is narrated to you. So it's much better on audiobook. And it means and like sounds better on audiobook because this story started as something J.R.R. Tolkien read and like made up and narrated to people to like I, I'm pretty sure it was kids I don't know which kids but he like made this up as a bedtime story and so it's much better like if you are hearing it than if you're reading it so when I was reading it it was really hard to get through and once I switched to audiobook I was like this is much better. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it doesn't have as much depth as Lord of the Rings, but I like it because it is not as intimidating as Lord of the Rings, which is, I still haven't read because it's just so long and the audiobook is like 36 hours or something. Um, but it is like, I feel like it ends pretty abruptly and you're just like, oh, okay, that, that's it. And they embellished it a lot more for the three movies because it really, really could have been one, maybe two. It didn't need to be three movies, but it's fine. They were still good movies. I hope he was giving the bedtime stories to his own kids, because that'd be kind of yeah. weird if he like, found it some random like, kids. He's like, I don't know the story. <laughs> it sounded like he was giving bedtime stories to random children, and that would be horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> would you yeah. just like gather around children? <laughs> yeah. To my house, I'll tell you a story. Gather around their children. <laughs> Um, so the first time I read The Hobbit was, I was in grade four, and so we had this thing at our school when I was in grade four, and the principal would come to our classroom, like everyone's classroom, and they would read us, like, a random book, 
And the book that the principal was reading to our class was The Hobbit. So the first time that I was exposed to it was like actual, like it was a story being told to me. Probably not as, my principal probably wasn't as professional as your audiobook narrator. But, but I, think, I think he did a good job because it was literally like, gather around children, come let me tell you a story about this Hobbit. So it was really cool because there were like a whole bunch of us and there was one, um, like our principal was reading it to us. So I really, really liked it back in, in fourth grade. Um, I think that I also prefer like someone else telling me the story, but I don't know if that's just because I was like a little kid and I was like, oh my gosh, the principal is reading to us. Or if I like genuinely enjoy someone reading me the story as opposed to like reading it myself. Um, I do have to say that I like The Hobbit more than the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It just takes so long to get through those. You guys just take so long. <laughs> but I can't. I, I still really liked it though. Yeah, I heard that um, Lord of the Rings is like half description like pages. yeah he's talking about like a forest or something I don't even know that's why I've been intimidated to pick it up so I'm like let's start with The Hobbit because it's a children's book so hopefully we can finish it um yeah. but, Lord of the Rings is a lot of like descriptions like mountains and like the snow is this and that and I'm like walking okay. I mean it's not like, terrible it's just a lot yeah, yeah I mean um, but I don't know if I like description or not, but anyway, um, Hannah and I were talking earlier and saying how we um, probably would have liked it more if we read it when we were children, um, because hearing your story, Joss, about how like you were in fourth grade or grade four, I love, I love your Canadian words, um, Canadian words. <laughs> um, but having someone read it to you, I definitely think I would have liked it more if it, like my mom or someone read it to me as I was going to bed, especially there are those portions where he like stops talking. He's like, wait, what is a Hobbit? You probably want to know. And I was reading that and I was just like, what, what are you talking about? Just like, I don't know. Um, but I definitely, I still really enjoyed it. I, uh, it's been a while since I have watched any Lord of the Rings movies. I tried to watch them when I was a kid because my whole family is a bunch of nerds. So we watched all the movies, but I was so afraid of Gollum that I didn't, I, I had nightmares, like full on nightmares about Gollum. I thought I would turn into Gollum because he was like a small little creature. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. You're not going to turn into Gollum, Zoe, we promise. It like some werewolf transformation. I just like, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but so that, I think that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to read these books when I was smaller, especially because I didn't know that Gollum was in this first book. So it's crazy. But I finally started rewatching the Lord of the Rings movies. And then I read this. So it was very nice, kind of like a reintroduction to the world. I, I didn't know that the ring was in the first book. I mean, like it was in this book. So I, I saw Gollum and then there was a ring. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, you don't know the destiny. So it was, it was really, it was kind of fun to know more than Bilbo did in this situation. But I don't, did he know that he was going to write more books after he wrote this? Or did he wait a while to have people ask him questions about, like, what is the ring? Like, what's happening with that? Let's do that after. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm Googling so. it right now. I'm pretty sure The Hobbit came after Lord of the Rings. Really? Oh, I thought he wrote this one first. Oh, I don't think so. But let me Google it. <laughs> I have no idea. I know the movie. Yeah, he wrote. He, no, he wrote The Hobbit first. He okay. wrote The Hobbit almost. 20 years before he wrote Lord of the Rings. Oh, so it was like an immediate thing. So people probably asked him, like, what happens after Bilbo gets home? And then... Yeah, so he wrote The Hobbit in 1937, and then Lord of the Rings came out in 1954. And then The Silmarillion, which is, like, the um, sequel. It's, like, a, a bunch of, like, small stories about the world and everything, kind of before Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Um, and that came out in 1977. So they were each published, like, almost 20 years apart. Wow. I mean, yeah. I guess that gave him a long time to write all of those descriptions to build that world. Didn't he, like, create <laughs> Elvish? Like, he he made up a language. Yeah. yeah. And, dwar mm -hmm. and dwarf language and the orc language. He wrote more yeah, than he created that. several languages. Yeah. Yeah, any language that's in Lord of the Rings, he created. I haven't read mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings, so, oh, I don't know. I didn't know there was more than one 
Wow. I aspire to be him. I have a fun fact. Oh, about, okay. Well, go. Um, this is like from, <laughs> it's from like a romance novel that's a Christian romance novel, but this girl did very extensive research on C.S. Lewis and Lord of the Rings and uh, J.R.R. Tolkien. And J.R.R. Tolkien actually like makes an appearance in one of the books. But whenever <laughs> in the romance book, is he like Yeah, you go like visit it's 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 great. I love it. Um but Wait, what happens? How does he appear? <laughs> okay, so these books take place in the fifties and the first book is about this guy um who is a professor, a young professor at Oxford and C.S. Lewis, he's a fictional character obviously, but C.S. Lewis was like one of his mentors and it's right after he dies. And so J.R.R. Tolkien survived C.S. Lewis by quite a bit. And he like in like the third book, there's a character that's like closer to J.R.R. Tolkien. So him and like his like fiance or whatever go and visit him and his wife. Anyway, this is besides the point, but one thing that was a really fun fact that I always like telling people, because she did a huge amount of research, was that J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis would play Scrabble together, but their version of Scrabble, they could use any language, any word, like Elvis or anything, as long as they could find it in a book. So, like, <laughs> if they found it in a book, then they could use it, and C.S. Lewis had a photographic memory so it was like really hard playing against him because like he would do stuff in his classrooms where he would like all right pick a book and a page and read me like the first line and I'll continue it and people would pick like you know like the dustiest books the tallest shelf in like the corner and he would be able to recite it word for word so like I can't even imagine like what their Scrabble games were like I'm just like terrible I, was, like, I wouldn't want to too intense watch. I would try yeah <laughs> I feel like, no, I'm out. You guys play an Elvish. <laughs> Enjoy your Elvish. Green. <laughs> um, uh, oh, you were talking, Hannah, you were talking earlier, and Maureen were talking earlier about the movies. I've yeah. only seen the first movie. So I'm going to have it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I know, I know, I'm I'm behind on that. Um, But, like, how did they add three how was it three movies with this much like what did they add <laughs> they added a lot of character they added yeah a, so they added multiple characters because yeah, i mean but one of them was significant one of them was a completely fictional character and then they added in legolas because he yeah. isn't look at all but he like comes in like it makes sense but then the added elvish character is like completely fictional there's an added romance it's because of that. No more. Well, I mean, granted, to burst your bubble. I mean, granted, also there was there are no female characters in this entire book, and so then they added a female character into the movie, which is nice. Just one. <laughs> At least it's one. Yeah. <laughs> At least there's one. Yes. Yeah. At least. They also <laughs> expanded a lot. Like I was thinking through it, they expanded like a lot of characters. Um. Um, arcs a lot, like especially yeah. Bard, they expanded his arc massively and they changed a lot of what happened in Lake Town because yeah. in the movies they are like not welcomed at all and Bard is the one who takes them in and so they gave him this whole huge character arc that is like a couple lines in the book where they were like, well his dad was this person and he has this arrow that can kill the dragon um and they give him, like, a whole arc with that rather than, like, a couple lines. I'm trying to think of, like, what else. They they add, it's just, a lot of things are just expanded and things that are talked about over a couple of lines. Like, I think Bilbo is at the Elvish Kingdom for a couple weeks while everybody's captured. And they, like, that's, like, maybe a couple pages. And then the barrel scene they made like a huge big thing also it was so good but it's yeah it's so good it's so well done <laughs> but they made it like complete they just like fabricate a lot of stuff to make it more exciting which is just movie culture and i feel like it was good even though i still am of the opinion i like all of the movies i'm still of the opinion that it didn't need to be three movies but i like the movies that came still <laughs> Oh, I'm reading the chat, and Crystal Clear Review says that Toriel was in, like, a little bit of Lord of the Rings. 
So oh. she wasn't completely made up. But mm. just, well, like she wasn't a main character or like even like a big like not at all. She's just a tiny little character, but they put her okay. Okay. in Lord of the Rings movies. Yeah. Um, no, in the book, I believe. In the books, okay. Yeah, she's not. A I movie. don't remember. <laughs> I just remember that they were very long. Yeah, they added in a romance with her and a dwarf too. That was obviously since she's not in this book, they added in that romance portion as well. And then I'm trying to think. There's um the guy that they go and stay with in the forest is kind of a different character. Tom he, Bombadil? He's like, well, in the movies, he's just a little bit more eccentric. He's not in like, the movies. Oh, did they replace him with that other guy? Is that what yeah. it is? Okay. So the whole like Tom Bombadil thing that happens in this, which is significantly long in the book, doesn't happen at all in the movies. Well, it, so they got rid of stuff that was like a big portion in the book, and then they yeah. it with like, and then it, like disappeared in the movies. Yeah. Well, and then it, like little things in the book that were like two pages were like huge in the movies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not necessarily that it's like gone because they still go and like stay with somebody. I can't remember where it is. Where is it that they stay that they have like, um, like all of the stuff is too big for them, and they're like. They go somewhere in the movie, and I think it's with that um, that other guy who's, like, the forest guy who, like, rides. Oh, bears. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, what's his name? The guy who, like, turns into, like, some bear thing. Yeah, yeah that guy. I know what you're talking about. Ba- like, Bayorn or something like that? Well, it's him, but it's, I'm, that's what I was talking about. It's him, yeah. but it's not him. He's, like, a, yeah. he's a different character in the movie. Yeah. What are you guys talking about? I have to talk about something completely different the whole time. We were talking about Tom Bombadil. Which part was that? Remind it's me. It's, like, I, I don't remember. It was, like, it's, like, towards the beginning. It's, like, right around when they first, or, like, when they first leave or something like that. Or am I mixing this up with Lord of the Rings? Does that happen in Lord of the Rings? Because I don't remember. <laughs> talking about, but I just know that, that Bjorn was the the bear. Yeah. Yeah, but he's like I think that maybe his name in the movie, but he doesn't like turn into a bear, and he's not like big and manly. He's like an eccentric old dude. That's pretty yeah. much what he is. Oh yeah, and the whole part about like um, Thorin having like this orc enemy is also totally in the movies. And yeah. Not in the books at all. Like there's this, they're like running from orcs. Are they orcs? I don't really know what they are. Cause they're, they're like not-, not orcs. They're like before orcs, but I don't remember what they're called. And so he has like this whole rivalry. Like there's a whole part where there's a slow-mo stare down between Thorin and this leader guy. And all of that is not in the book at all. Isn't yeah. Gimli in Lord of the Rings, isn't he related to one of the characters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I watched the first movie, and then, like, I heard him say that, and I was like, whoa, I actually know what you're talking about. <sighs> yeah, and I mean, I feel like because the Hobbit movies, I think I read the Hobbit after I read Lord of the Rings, or after I watched Lord of the Rings, because I didn't want to commit to Lord of the Rings, so I was like, I'll read the Hobbit instead, <laughs> um, in, like, eighth grade or something like that. And I remember realizing how, um, like, whenever they go into the mountain and Gimli sees that everybody's dead and he's super devastated, then it, like, connected the dots for me. It was like, it's these people! And then I was really sad. Oh, my gosh. Um, I said, yes, Tom Bombadil is... Yeah, in Lord of the Rings. I just looked it up. Yeah, I mix them up all the time. Get it together, Hannah. (laughs) <laughs> you live. Um, oh, in the books, the wargs, the beasts, the orcs, ride can actually. Speak. Yes. They, oh, yes. They what? What? In the books, the wargs, the beasts, the orcs, ride can actually speak. They are much more than just animals. Yeah. Oh, it's those, it's the wolf things that fight yeah. them and try to burn them in the trees. Got it. Are there. Is there stuff with, like, the goblins, or are they running from the orcs in the movie? I can't remember if, like, the stuff with the goblins happens, or... I don't I remember, to... honestly. It, yeah. I, I've been so lost for a lot of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you're, like, analyzing it. I'm like, oh, okay. Yes. But now I need okay. to go, like, watch the movies. Oh, my gosh. There are also other comments that say, Toriel was never in the books. She was made up for the movies. 
Toriel was not in the Lord of the Rings books. She was only created by Peter Jackson is only in the second and third Hobbit movies. Okay. Yeah, so, I don't, I mean, I've only read the first one, but I don't remember her being mentioned at all. Wait, you've read the first Lord of the Rings? Yes. What? How was that? Well, that's why I kept talking about Tom Bombadil, because I kept mixing it oh, up. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they're running from Azog in the movie? Yeah, Azog is like the orc guy that Thorin has some rivalry with. Cool. Oh, so let's go back to the book. Emma <laughs> says the orcs show up with the whole war, fire burning episode, the goblins win the tunnels under the mountains. So I guess that's when the orcs show up. They're orcs instead of goblins. Are mm. the ones that like come after them in the trees. And then the eagles save them. I like your... Yes. <laughs> um, who was your favorite character in this? Do you guys have one, or are they all just blurred like together? All the blurred. A lot of them are blurred together. I feel like all the dwarves besides Thorin really, like, run together for me. Yeah, they... Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember the one who's... Uh, Bomble is the one who's always mentioned last, but I just remember him being round. And that's, like, the only distinguishing character I have with, like, anybody. Yeah. That's Me? What yeah. Oh, that's, that's what I describe him as. I mean, I like Bilbo. Just Bilbo's, Bilbo's great. Um, yeah. But, like, okay, this is the reason I like the movies more, because I love stories about characters, and, like, everything in the movies just develops every single character. Like, you care about each of the dwarves. So, like, I have, like... I like them more than I like the book characters, which is frustrating. But I like book Bilbo. Like, I love Bilbo in the book. Yeah, I relate to him hard. Yeah, he's great. Like, I don't I want to be. I so relate to Bilbo. Yeah. Because I don't want to body. I don't want to go anywhere. But then once he goes somewhere, he's like, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, oh, we talked about this earlier too, Hannah, about um, how this book was very much like they never got, at, like, a moment of rest. It was just, like, one mm -hmm. event after another. Like, they walk two feet, and they're like, oh, no, we're going to die. And then they walk two more feet, and they're like, they're spiders. <laughs> spiders. Yes. Well, let's be real. Some of it was their stupidity, because they're like, there's a fire. Let's go off the path like the guy told us not to do. And <laughs> go away from the path and then just keep following the fire. That's a good idea. And that really causes a lot. Like, that causes most of their problems from there on out in the book. Yeah. Yeah. But I just wanted like two moments where they were like having a good time. We're just like, I don't, I needed like some moment of rest because there was just, but I guess this is, a, this is supposed to be like a children's story. So like children just want action. They don't want to care about like the deep, like emotional issues of like all of these characters. That's what Lord of the Rings is for, I guess. You might, they might care. You don't know that. Did you care about people's lives when you were a kid? I did. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I did. <laughs> no, I just like, I cared about people. I want people to die all the time. Oh dear, you care about people. Oh my gosh, Hannah. Um, <laughs> what was your favorite part? Did you have one? I really I like it when Bilbo named his sword. Yeah, Sting. It was yeah. So cute. I was like, he's like, and I named you Sting. <laughs> it reminded me, I've only seen like two episodes of Game of Thrones, but it reminded me of when like Arya names her, names it, was it Needle? Needle. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, oh, I'm so proud of my, my little tiny characters, like naming their big old swords. Yeah. <laughs> I like I just like that it's about like dwarves and hobbits and they're all tiny but still yeah. strong and it's great. And then Gandalf like doesn't even care about them. He's like, bye. <laughs> I'm gonna go go yeah. ahead and not help you out. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? He just like ended up like leaving half the time. Um I really liked um I had it. Oh I like I, wait, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, because I, I had it and I lost it. I like the riddles. I love figuring out the riddles. That was literally my favorite part. I remember when I first read it, like, I sat there and I was like, okay, I already know this. Oh, the other thing is I've seen The Hobbit as, like, a play on stage before. Oh. I saw that, like, before I ever read the book or ever before the movies ever even came out, too. But um, 
yeah, so I, like, I remember hearing the riddles in that, and then, like, they have them in the movie, too, I think, but not all of them. But, like, when I was reading the book, I would, like, go through every single riddle. I'd be like, okay, I have to figure this out. And then, like, I would, like, figure one out, and then I couldn't figure another one out. I'm like, no, no, I can't keep reading until I get it right. And, yeah, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. I did the same thing. Like, that yeah. little section took me a whole night to read. Yeah. What is it? Uh, some of them were really good, but then they were like, what is it, the star one or darkness? One of those. I was like, darkness, I think. I got that. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, what? I love it when he's just like, time, I need more time, but it just comes out time and that's the answer to the riddle. Yep. <laughs> Accidental genius. Did you have genius. an illustration? Honestly, that's... Yeah. Whoa. Right? Yeah. Yeah, these are so, like, so nice. Some of them do. Oh, it's mm -hmm. so cute. I love it. Yeah, and they're, like, throughout the whole thing. Here's one. Ooh. Whoa, what? Um, my favorite part was the Bilbo Smog face-off. It's always my favorite. To do. When he's, like, trying to, I mean, essentially riddle him and be, like, not tell him his name. So, like, go through this, like, extensive list of things that he is. Which ends up screwing Lake Town over, but it's fine. Um, and just the intensity of all of that scene and how Bilbo really comes out and is actually like the burglar that he was never actually supposed to be. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna do this. Oh, that's another thing that I thought about from like the movie and the difference between one of the big differences I feel like between the movies and the book is in the movie in the book they're literally all just in the mountain getting treasure and they don't know that smog is dead and they just and then they find out from everybody coming to the door or from that raven that's what it is the raven or the other the fresh or whatever and they find out and they're like oh yeah but in the movie it's a lot more emotional because bilbo realizes that he made a mistake and then he sees smog like flying to Lake Town, and that's how the second movie ends. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. In the movie, like, ends there, and you're like, oh, what? So, like, he impending knows, doom. Yeah, he knows he made a mistake, and he knows how awful it's going to be, and you actually feel all of those emotions rather than, like, kind of some small after the fact stuff. Mm -hmm. um, people are saying that they, Isabella says that she likes the part with the spiders, um, and a lot of people said the riddles. The riddles are so good. The spiders was where Bilbo named his sword, right? Yeah. 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 I'm a warrior. <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> um, how, what was? Oh yeah, I finally got over my fear of Gollum, so we're we're all good. That was a very good. very moment for me because I didn't know he was in this book, but I'm proud. But also, I feel so bad for him. Like it, it went from like being deathly afraid to him it's just like you have a have a sad life man but i wonder how yeah. he got into that cavern how did you how did i you mean have you watched lord of the rings yeah it tells you i spent it a gives, while since i've seen lord of the rings so wait, it gives you his entire backstory <laughs> and it tells you how he got there <laughs> what's the first one <laughs> no i'm talking lord of the rings you've seen all three of them haven't you no, it's been 10 years since I saw all three of them, and I just rewatched the first one. I haven't rewatched re this other <laughs> I heard of Oh, I'm gonna fix it. <laughs> <laughs> How did you even get in that cavern? They literally explode. <laughs> How did they get there? <laughs> you know, that must have been a valid question if it's answered, okay? <laughs> okay, okay, but do you, do you want to know Bilbo's backstory? Do you know his backstory? Bilbo? Or not Bilbo, sorry. Gollum. I'm tired, y'all. Yeah. Let me know. Um, so he, like, he and his, his family, they were hobbits, but, like, I think... They the, weren't like, hobbits. They were, like, what was before hobbits. Before it was, like, hobbits. they were, like, river people, something like that. It was, yeah. like, they were the farmer versions of hobbits, and then they, like, yeah. became hobbits from there. And he and his brother were on his, uh, on a boat fishing for his birthday, and they find this ring, and then Gollum, who was not Gollum, I can't remember what his name was. Smeagol. Smeagol, there we go. I knew that. <laughs> he was like, it's my birthday present, and then him and his brother fight over it, and then he kills his brother over the ring and starts wearing it, 
and it gives him super, super long life, like you see in Bilbo in the first Lord of the Rings movie. And he just becomes obsessed with it, and then he just, like, ends up migrating to the cave over time. He, like, starts becoming that, like, really dark creature and then eating raw fish instead of cooked food. And then, like, it's kind of like one of those things where you see, like, his progression of his path, and then he ends up... I think he lived, like, somewhat close to there. They don't really tell you exactly where he lived, but he, like, traveled to get farther into darkness because he needed darkness to survive. What a, what a symbol. Um, Randy Reading said they're river folk. Yeah, river folk. There we go. Um, there we go. Uh, Timothy Forrest wants to know, were there any moments you all weren't expecting in the book? Were you, I mean, a lot of you were reading it. Were all of you reading it for the second time? Yeah. I mean, I was the only one who read it for the first time. It's not, I kind of just, I talked about it just a second ago but I forgot it's more like I forgot that they are just like in the mountain looking at treasure for two days without knowing that Smog is dead and that they don't like they don't really the, they have a whole scene with like the dwarves almost like running away from him and like kind of a face off before he goes over to Lake Town in the movies and that's what I remembered so I kind of forgot that that was not in the book at all <laughs> so it's more of a lack of stuff that I'm like oh yeah that wasn't in there what about you, Dust? I feel like there wasn't. I'm trying to think of, yeah. like, is there a Hobbit plot twist? And I don't think, like, there was any. It was great. Were you like, whoa, man? Well, okay, the only thing I remember, like, the one thing that really sticks out from when the principal was reading it to us for the first time was during the riddles part, like, that chapter with the riddles, everyone was just, like, yelling all these random things. And I'd be like, <laughs> why do you think that? <laughs> <laughs> ever just, like, yelling random stuff. <laughs> but, like, like because I was reading it for the second time, it was, like, I, I remembered everything from the first time, so there weren't any, like, surprises, I guess. But, like, the first time I was reading it, I just remember everyone yelling. <laughs> but that's it. I had seen, like, the movies first, so, like, before I read it, I already kind of knew what was going to happen, at least, like, in the end, so it wasn't, like, that shocking. But, like, I do remember not expecting... Well, are we spoiling things? Can I, like... I mean, we kind of spoiled spoil it. I think it's fine. Okay. We already told about, like, all of the whole think, history. <laughs> I did not think that Thorin was going to die. Yeah. Like, I didn't expect that at all. And when it happened, I was so sad. I was like, this is a children's story. Why are they dying? So, yeah, that... Like, I didn't expect it, and it made me sad. Wait, how is Gimli related to him? Is he, like, great-grand... Like, grandson or something? great uncle or something. Okay, I'm like, how yeah. did Kula like, have children right before he died? I mean, it was possible, but I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I think that was, like, the big part that surprised me. But I just remembered one of my favorite parts was with the trolls, and Gandalf was, like, in the corner making all those, like, uh, pretending to be one of the other trolls, like, doing their voices. Oh, yeah. A good time because it doesn't ever say it was Gandalf until like the very end. So I'm like, is like one of I I, I was confused, but then I I don't know why I, that part stuck out to me so much. Um, you guys, I was like the last time I was googling something about Gollum's backstory. One of the related searches is why is Legolas so angry in The Hobbit? <laughs> <laughs> but really, no. I know. But really, no. Why is so angry? <laughs> But because he's like so much more lighthearted. I mean, he's yeah. super, he's more lighthearted in Lord of the Rings, and you think it would be opposite, but maybe it's just because Orlando Bloom got older, even forgot he was supposed to be playing like a younger version. <laughs> he was angry about aging. <laughs> it was like a, it's well, teenage it's teenage angst. It's teenaged angst. That's what it is. <laughs> you know what? I think I do know. Now that I th now that I've thought about it more, I think because he's very like under the thumb of his dad in this True. movie he kind of like gets out from under that and his dad's like expectations of him if you will and then in lord of the rings he's kind of like a free agent he's just doing his thing living his life was it the that his dad the guy from pushing daisies you ever watch that show no I, oh, okay it was a great show when it was on for like one season but it was great it was what 
it's on CW Seed, and you can yeah, watch, it. watch it. There's Christian Chenoweth and that that guy who's the dad of Legless. I forgot his name, um, but he's in it. And it's real interesting. But that's all I can think of when I watch that movie, when I watch the first movie. It's like, it's the pie guy. Anyway, um, I'm looking if there are any more questions. Do you guys have anything else you want to mention? going to talk about the movie some more. I don't know. I would just like to mention that Keeley as and Aiden Turner playing Keeley in the movie is perfect and I love him so much. <laughs> Keeley's my favorite character, like hands down my favorite character. Ooh, um, I just googled him. Yeah. <laughs> watch Cold Dark. <laughs> is he in it? Mhm. Mm well then He's I the main character watch. Cold Dark. Good recommendation. Thanks, Anna. <laughs> well, where is he from? Is he from something else? I feel like I've seen him before. Um, he's in Being Human, the UK version, if you've seen that, oh. um, which is also another good show. Highly recommend. I like anything with him in it, um, <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, I, Orlando Bloom was two, is two years older than the guy who played his dad. He's Whoa. older than him? Yeah, two years older. And Lee Pace, that's the name of the dad. What? Um, yeah. yeah. He was also in, um, Breaking Dawn, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Isn't he one of the like three vampires, the old ones? The yeah. Old no, yeah. No, no. I don't know. He was one of those three names. names. I couldn't remember that name. No, he's one of the ones who like come to help in Breaking Dawn. Like one of the randos. Oh, never mind. I hate that movie, so <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, maybe. They get progressively worse. So they, yeah. they were bad to begin with, and they get progressively worse. As yeah. A hundred percent. I remember watching Eclipse, like, not in theaters. I watched the first two in theaters, and I remember watching a clip like a couple months after it was released to DVD illegally on my computer, and literally laughing. I watched it in theaters, sorry. and I left the theater screaming because I was so angry at how bad it was. <laughs> I was also like thirteen, so <laughs> <laughs> I watched the movie, and I was like, "Well, I really like these songs." Oh, <laughs> Aiden Turner. Track. It said Aiden Turner was also Luke in the City of Bones movie. Yes, what? he was in City of Bones. He put no, wait, the, the one that came out in like 2012, yes. 2013, that yeah. one? Yes. I only really? watched that movie because he was in it. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> I like how the like, entire chat is just like people say, he was in this and this. Because oh, he's yeah, awesome. He's in the City of Bones movie. Ooh. Oh, okay. Lee Pace is in Guardians of the Galaxy? What? Oh yeah, he. Um, what is he in? Isn't he the like evil guy? I have no idea. I think he's the evil guy. He like, plays. He's the one that's like the evil one that was related to Gamora or was like in charge of Ronan. Him. Yeah, Ronan. That's him. Ronan. Oh wait, no. Is Ronan? Is Ronan the big buff dude? I think Ronan is. Someone said he plays Ronan. Okay, who's Ronan? Oh, really? Okay, so I'm not, I'm not just making that I don't movie. know. I've only seen the first one, and I watched it, like, when it came out in theaters years ago, so I don't remember anything about that movie. Same. <laughs> it's so good, though. Yeah, I liked it. I'm just behind on every movie ever, so. And TV show. Yes. Haven't finished Stranger Things season one, <laughs> so. I'm looking up okay. the because I want to see. Think we have wrapped up with our discussion of The Hobbit and the Hobbit movies. <laughs> it was a fun discussion. Thank you, everybody. Oh, um, our book for October and November. Yes, we are very behind in our live shows. Um, but our book is Mary Poppins by, I forgot, who is it by? Who's it? I'm looking it up. Looking P.L. Travers. P.L. Travers. Yes, P.L. Travers. And we're going to probably have our live show at the end of this month or the very beginning of December. And then we are going to take a very brief hiatus for December and January just to- You can read Harry Potter in December for Harry Christmas to you. Yes, there is also uh, Maureen's read along for all of the Harry Potter books in December, but we are going to take a little holiday vacation from Ostentatious, but we will be back in February and March for a new book. So, Thank you all for watching this live show. Thank you all for joining the discussion. And 
have a good day. I'm going to go watch all the Hobbit movies so I know what you all were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.